Hey everybody, Austin here. Hey, I just wanted to make a short little re uh, kind of like a piggyback video on my first uh, recap when I went over high steady volume consolidation um, using AXSM as an example. Uh, a couple days later, we got a, another kind of example where I use you know kind of the same philosophy um, to enter a trade on INPX, and I wanted to go over it with you guys. INPX. Yeah, so INPX was another one that kind of showed how volume can sometimes help nudge a, nudge a stock to keep continuing in the direction that it's moving. So INPX gapped up this day. I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't even remember what the news is. I don't, I don't remember uh, how much was that up, 340 to, yeah, so it was up, it was up enough. It was up, it was up enough to gather attention. Um, I, I don't even know what the company does. Like, what is this? Like, like AX. I even forgot what AXSM does. INPX is. Um, oh, it's a turd. Okay, it's a total turd. Yeah, it's a. Oh, definitely big turd. How? Wow. How high does this? <laughs> wow. <laughs> absolute turd. That's what the company does. It's an absolute turd. Jesus. What, how high does this go? <laughs> well, what is this? 17, 17, 17 million. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a pretty tough resistance up here at 17 million dollars. Does it, does it go any higher? No, that's it. Yeah, so that's what the company does. It's a total turd, total pig. But pigs can fly, you know? Like, I mean, uh, VLTC flew, um, AQXP uh, flew, you know, pigs can fly. I think VLTC is now an OTC. Like, so just because they're pigs, that doesn't mean that they can't fly. And, you know, you know, a pig flying can be a very profitable trade. And, you know, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm striving for is, you know, how can these pigs be longable? And um, so here we go. We get our second situation here with INPX. So again, like, like I said in the first video, I like to disregard volume in the first like five to 10 minutes of the day, because it's not really that that different than um, what it's going to be regardless. So there's very, le very less uh, of a, there's less differentiation. You know, I can't read much. I went over that in the first video. And I, you know, and when they're rising and falling in price. So, uh, so that, that's actually like this, this setup, no, this situ this example isn't the, as good a example of the other one, but there's still something here. Uh, so, um, what almost kept me out of this trade was the fact that this consolidation here, you know, was only about 20 minutes total after the open. So like really only like five to, f you know, 15 minutes of volume that I like to pay attention to, but it was the only stock moving. And, um, w uh, one key difference with this stock with AXSM was AXSM had about a 20 million share float. This stock had a 1 million share float. That's why I was able to be a little, I don't want to say uh, less disciplined, but a little bit rule bendy. Like this is typically a little too close to the open than I like to play these. But because it's a 1 million share float and things can happen very fast, I was a little bit more liberal with that, with that kind of timing aspect of the, the philosophy. But because this had a 1 million share float, now, I'm surprised I didn't get very many questions about this. Like when I talk about high steady volume consolidation, AXSM was trading, and I mentioned like it was trading like 100, 150,000 shares every single minute. Whereas this one was only trading about 65, um, 60 million, you know, 50 to 70 million shares a minute. Maybe the mode is what I like to pay attention to. And you can say, well, how's that high volume? AXSM was like 100 something. Well, for me, it's all about uh, volume to float um, relation, you know, like I brought up the Apple example, it doesn't matter, like if Apple was somehow trading 5 million shares every single minute, that would be ridiculously high volume and I would definitely pay attention to that. Um, but for this one, you know, like 50, you know, 50 to 100,000, that's actually, that's pretty significant volume for a 1 million share float. So, you know, the, I, you know, I was still intrigued and then let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, this is probably good enough, but zoom in a little bit more. We kind of get the same situation that AXSM had though. Like 
we have this consolidation. I know part of this is the, is the open, but I told you I'm a little bit more liberal with this one. But this is where the key determinant was for me. When this, you know, after this failed here, I expected the volume to kind of roll over. And especially after this stuff here, I expected the volume to just kind of roll roll down and the stock, uh, you know, fade. But when it didn't, when the stock didn't fade, that's kind of when I got interested. And um, so when we got this, when we got this immediate reclaim here, um, I actually, I was a buyer. I bought this here and I think I bought the top. <laughs> so because I bought the top, this is, I knew it was a potentially stuffy area, by the way, I did not go full size here. And there's a reason for that. Um, part of the reasons why I don't like to go full, I didn't go full size here was because I didn't have a risk, like a set fixed risk that I was comfortable with or even that I liked. You know, like if I were to buy here, um, the risk that I would think that would invalidate this trade thesis would be under this here, this 415 failed kind of rollover area on, on some volume. So I didn't want to buy it up here at like 60, 65 and risk 415. I didn't want to risk that. So, um, you know, I only put a starter on and I even got shaken out of my starter. I, I ended up selling half here. Um, but thankfully, like it, um, it pu pushed back. It gave me a set risk that I was comfortable with. So I added the shares right back on. And when we broke over here again, I doubled because I was comfortable. Once I had a set fixed risk that I was comfortable with, I was able to be more convicted and more comfortable. So I bought it here, and I think I have the, uh, I think I have it right here. Um, no, wrong chart. Um, this one. Uh, no, that that's kind of the morning one I took. This is probably a better one. Yeah, that one's better. It shows more of the day anyway. It's closer to this picture. Anyway, so yeah, like, like I said, I bought the dead top there. And, you know, this is going to happen sometimes with longs because longs are, a lot of the times in nature, like make it or they have these make it or break it moments. And the problem with make it or break it moments is sometimes they break it. You know, a lot of the a lot of times longs are stuffy, you know, like where where you need to buy is potentially a stuffy area. And typically I tend to shy away from high of day breaks, you know, unless it's been grinding all day kind of deal. But like, you know, I'm rambling. But um, anyway, like. When I didn't have a fixed risk, you know, I, I only put on a starter, got shaken out. But once we came back, like this would have been the third attempt, kind of like how AXSM had like two or three attempts to fail. Um, this, this is like, this was the big fail for me, this one right here. And when this came, I was interested and, I, you know, I eagerly got in. Um, <clears throat> but then when we set this third this third higher low here, this third uh, failure to break down and rip back, that's when I know I definitely wanted to be in and I was able to size in right here. And I definitely took some profit here. You know, I took some profit before the high of day like I always do. Um, and, and I was able to sell some here at the top. And, you know, again, this, like, it's, <clears throat> longs are very hard to know, like, where the top's going to be. It's like the same as shorting, like, how high is the short going to be? You don't know um, where the top is. But, uh, you know, like if, if this, you know, I can't really define much of why I sold it all here. It just kind of, you know, if it went higher, I would have cried. So, you know, I just, I just happened to get the top, but that's not the important part of the trade. The important part was the similarities between this and AXSM, the, the, the high volume relative to the float, the, the failure to break, the, the opposite thesis failed a couple times, and then it gave me a good enough entry with a good enough set risk that I was comfortable with going. Um, going in. So anyway, just wanted to do that short little piggyback, um, maybe add a second um, example, you know, hopefully that helps the arsenal, maybe helps the brain to understand it a little bit um, differently. Uh, anyway, if you guys have any questions or whatnot, please feel free to PM me in chat. Uh, aloha.